Hello, I'm Marsha Ogden. Welcome to my podcast, Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus. It's for anyone who's passed that milestone, like me, by a long chalk, and who, like me, has realised that we could be on this earth for another 30 or 40 years. So let's plan to make the rest of our life the best of our life. Before we get started with this week's episode, can I just remind you to please, please, please review, share and subscribe to the Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast on whatever platform you're listening on. And if you do want to plan to make the rest of your life the best of your life, take a look at www.gurgleit.com forward slash my best life and find out more about my best life journal and workshops. Welcome to episode 50 of the Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast. This one's called Eating for Victory. And so ends week six of our coronavirus, COVID-19 quarantine in the UK. I hope you're all doing well. As you may or may not have guessed, we've got a VE Day theme this week, since we have just been commemorating the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe. So I've got some food related wartime handy hints for you. I've also got a lovely little story to share with you about a memory from VE Day, as well as a little wartime cake recipe. Now, if you do use the recipe, let me know how it turned out. So what did you do to commemorate VE Day? All those big community plans had to be shelved, didn't they? I was really looking forward to volunteering for the Rotary Club, manning their stand at a big local event. Such a shame, all that planning. And we even moved the bank holiday here in the UK, didn't we? From bank holiday Monday to Friday. Because there was a thing on Facebook saying, just in case you were confused, because you know, with coronavirus and lockdown, nobody knows what date is anyway. So (laughs) there's a thing that said, just in case you're confused and you don't know what day it is, this Friday is bank holiday Monday. (laughs) I liked that. Anyway, so I asked on social media this week for news of what you planned to do or what you did for VE Day. And I know my request was a bit late, so I've only got a couple of responses for you. But happily, one of them did come from the States, where almost half of this podcast listeners are actually from. So hi, if you're listening from the States, we're very pleased that you're here. So if you've got any stories of how you celebrated in lockdown, send them in because we're approaching the Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus first birthday. I know, can you believe it? And I'm gathering stories for that episode too. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's story time. I just want to read you an excerpt from my favourite VE Day story. It was in the Telegraph magazine last weekend. I'll put a link in the show notes. The title is Grandad Danced with the Queen in Trafalgar Square, but no one believed him. It's about the now 90-year-old Ronald Thomas. Actually, I have to tell you, one of the things that drew me to read the story in the first place was that they had a, a photo of Ronald as he is now at 90. And oh my goodness, I had to double take. It looked so like my dad when he was 90 and who we lost to dementia four years ago. But, oh my goodness, if you knew my dad, make sure you have a look at this article online. Here's the extract that I want to share with you. It was family folklore that we grew up with. My grandfather used to tell us that he had danced with the Queen on VE Day, but we didn't really know if it was true. He said... He and a friend got the train into London from Harrow and ended up in Trafalgar Square. There were lots of people dancing, including a girl he recognised. In brackets, it says Princess Elizabeth was wearing the uniform of the Auxiliary Territorial Service, with which she had served as a mechanic. Close brackets. He moved towards her and straight away said he knew who she was. Then they danced together for a few minutes, just a merry dance, She denied, brackets, her identity, brackets, at first, 
but he was so sure he said, I'd recognise your face anywhere. Eventually she admitted it, but told him to keep it quiet. He felt a strong sense of civic duty to the future monarch, which is why he didn't expose her then, and why he has been very bashful about it since. There were several big blokes with her, chaperoning, and after a few minutes they all moved, and that was that. It all happened very quickly, but he's thought of her very fondly ever since. He was absolutely certain it was her. He's always had a keen eye, and I have no doubt that his story is true. But when he told people, they laughed at him and said, Don't talk rubbish. It was written by his grandson, by the way, who is called Dominic Kavakeb. That's a lovely story, isn't it? And so typical of your family saying, oh, you're making it up, you're making it up. (laughs) As you know, instead of one handy life hack, whilst we're on lockdown, I'm collating information that I find in the newspaper or on social media about how to make the most of this very, very strange period in our lives. And so each week that we are in this situation, I'm trying to bring you the best ideas to keep us productive and, of course, entertained. This week, keeping to the VE Day theme, here are three food-related tips from World War II, actually from the Ministry of Food booklet number 30. We tend to think of the World War II wives as, as domestic goddesses, but actually, at the start of the war, many women really didn't know how to cook. But with the introduction of rationing, creative cookery became essential. The Ministry of Food's Kitchen Front campaign was launched to offer advice ranging from nutrition and recipes to the best ways to keep glass splinters out of food during an air raid. Now we don't have that concern, fortunately. But the advice is very transferable to the situation we're in today. Number one, foraging was a practical way of supplementing the diet. Blackberries, elderberries, wild garlic and stinging nettles are all easy picks. Fruit can be made into jam, wild garlic provides flavour and stinging nettles are a good alternative to spinach. (gasps) Who knew? Number two, prepare meals from scratch and be more inventive with what's available. This will lead to healthier diets and less food waste. Now, I think we all know that. It's pretty much common sense. But because of our way of life and our way of thinking, we perhaps don't necessarily think about starting everything from scratch. Number three. Oh, my mum used to do this. Always scrape the butter and margarine and cooking fat papers so as not to waste a scrap. Save the papers for greasing bowls or tins or covering steamed puddings and for wrapping round cheese to keep it fresh. Now, I think this is really interesting. I hope you do too. If you've ever wondered how much a person was entitled to during World War II, just your average civilian, I got this information from the historicuk.com website and it says that rationing began in 1940 when bacon, butter and sugar were rationed. But by 1942, many other things were rationed too, like milk, cheese, eggs and cooking fat. And this is a typical food ration allowance for an adult. I've worked it out, by the way, that four ounces is 113 grams, which is just about three or four thin slices of cooked meat, which was all I had in the fridge that I could compare it to. Not mine, of course, I'm vegan. It was Gary's. Right, you didn't need to know that, sorry. So, four ounce of bacon and ham, one shilling and tuppence value of other meat, which equated to about two chops, two ounces of butter, two ounces of cheese, four ounces of margarine, four ounces of cooking fat, which they would use because everything was cooked from scratch, remember, three pints of milk, eight ounces of sugar. Hmm. A pound of preserves every two months, two ounces of tea, one fresh egg, but you do get your allowance of dried egg, and 12 ounces of sweets every four weeks. 
remember those quantities of butter, cheese, meat, etc. were per week. I know people who can eat that in a day. I bet you do too. And I watched a film last night called, if I can get this right, The Guernsey Literary Club and Potato Peel Pie Society. And it was a really good story. But there was one scene and it, it, it must have, they must have researched it. It must be, you know, nearly right. I know they dramatise things, but I'm sure this must have been true. The residents of Guernsey were starved of food by the Germans or very, had very restricted access when the Germans occupied Guernsey. And they showed a scene where this guy sat down to his meal and it was literally the cooking water from the potato and a potato. A potato. And that was the meal. We don't know a bomb, basically, do we? So, let me tell you those plans that came in. Graham, from Virginia in the US, said, We are a family of four adults and I'm originally from the UK, so we decided to have a British jam sandwiches and cups of tea celebration. Brilliant! Sally from Roehampton, which is in the UK, but oh, and it's south, but I'm not quite sure where. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sally. She said, In our street, we've planned to put bunting up, and each family will sit in the front garden having scones, cake, wine and tea. And she hopes the sun keeps shining. Oh, that sounds so civilised. You can have a nice little chat across the fence, can't you? As long as you keep your two metre distance. <laughs> this is so strange, isn't it? Thank you so much, Graham and Sally. Let us know how you went on. And it did go on, as you know. Here's what I did. We didn't actually do anything as a street, but I did attend a Rotary Club Zoom celebration. We drank a toast to the Queen and remembered those lost. I watched the Winston Churchill speech on TV and in the evening we sat in the garden chatting over the fence to my neighbour. A very civilised day with wartime music in the background. It was nice to know that there's such community spirit around, even though we couldn't all get together. If you're not convinced yet that journaling can change your life, or perhaps in these very strange times of lockdown, you're just on a really strict budget, well, guess what? I've published the Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus My Best Life Journal onto Amazon Kindle at just £6.97 UK or £7.99 US dollars. Because obviously, having published the director of A Dream Life 50 Plus My Best Life Journal, I am going to keep stressing the benefits of journaling. And now, do not tell me you haven't got time. My journal is a year long. It's undated, so you can start it when you want. And the pages are big, so there's lots of room for a reflection and planning. And it's not just a diary or a planner. It's a place to write your thoughts and work on breaking bad habits and developing new traits and skills. And as I say, at £6.97, it's a snip. If you do still prefer the actual hardback edition, you can take advantage of my friends and family discount price of £23 rather than the advertised £33. All the links will be in the show notes. Now, have you had the baking bug recently whilst you've been at home? Because here's a little bonus. So get a pen and paper. I have to admit, I haven't tried this. I did intend to bake it before I recorded this and tell you how it turned out. Because I'm a bit intrigued by it. It's an eggless cake recipe. It's the foundation plain cake recipe from the Ministry of Food Leaflet number 30. But it just seems to replace the egg with milk and water. It's, it, yeah, I don't know what that's going to do to the end result, you know, to the texture. Hmm. Anyway, here's the recipe. 
half a pound of plain flour and four teaspoons of baking powder or half a pound of self-raising flour, a pinch of salt, three ounces of margarine, which of course could be plant-based, three ounces of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla essence and approximately a quarter pint of milk and water mixed. And again, it could be a milk alternative. Mix the flour, baking powder if used and salt. Rub in the margarine and add the sugar. Add the vanilla and mix into a dropping consistency with the milk and water. Turn into a greased 7 inch tin and bake in a moderately hot oven for 3 quarters of an hour to 1 hour. See what I mean? It's a, just a very normal cake recipe. Because you always think that eggs are important in the texture of a sponge, don't you? I'm going to go and do it now. I'll report back next week. And if you do it, let us know how you go on. The answer to last week's quiz is Citroen 2CV or De Chevaux. If you want to know what the question was, you'll have to listen back to episode 49. I had the Charleston 2CV. It was the best car I've ever had. Here's this week's question. Where in London did crowds gather to celebrate VE Day? I'm sure they gathered everywhere, but I'm after the main place. As usual, no Googling, and I'll give you the answer next week. Thanks so much for listening this week. Remember to check out the deals on My Best Life Journal, because there's no time like the present to do a bit of self-reflection and get into the rhythm of keeping tabs on your mind and body self-care routine. If it is something that you thought you'll get round to one day, today is that day. Do look after yourselves and if you need a bit of company, don't forget that you can catch up on previous Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcasts on many of the podcast platforms as well as YouTube as well as through my website. There's a new page, directoryofadreamlife.com and that will take you straight to all the podcast episodes. Stay safe and remember, if we've learned anything by our age, it's that nothing is forever. We're just going through a really strange time. Chin up, or should I say, in the words of Vera Lynn, we'll meet again. Don't worry, I'm not about to burst into song. (laughs) Have a great week. The Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast is created and produced by me, Marsha Ogden, and it's available on several platforms, as well as via our website. So please keep listening and tell your friends all about it. Do follow us on Instagram and Facebook too. You'll find all the relevant links in the show notes. Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus is about making our life happier and easier. So if you do have suggestions or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, just drop me a line at marsha at gurgleit.com. Have a fantastically happy week and I'll see you next time. Mm